In the 2008 IRB approved study performed by Dr. Sheely, he used MRI scans three times on each one of the uh, test individuals. He had about 36 patients, I believe, that he uh, did the MRI scans on. He performed one scan neutral with no device applied, one scan with linear traction equipment applied, and then one scan with the posture pump equipment, which uses EED technology, or expanding ellipsoidal decompression, known as EED. So the posture pump really isn't a traction device per se. It's more of an expanding decompressive piece of equipment. And this is what he found in this MRI study. In this particular individual, the neutral showed several bulges in the neck, at least two that are very prominent. And he also found that this individual had no cervical curve. When he applied the posture pump device to the individual during the MRI scan, this is what he found. He found that the posture pump forced a little bit of a curve in the neck, even though they were only in there for a, a few minutes. But he found that the discs expanded 25%, 31%, 23%, 20% and 41% respectively. He also found that when he applied linear traction to the same individual while they were in the MRI machine, they also had disc expansion, but to a lesser degree. 13 degrees instead of 25. 25 instead of 31. And this was pretty equal, about 23% at 4 and 5 on both individuals, but 12% for the linear traction, 20% with EED technology using the posture pump machine, and then 41% here compared to 39 with the linear traction. The overall importance, though, that he found, both devices did decompress the disc. However, the problem with the linear traction equipment was that we have lost the curve in the neck by pulling up on the head. We have literally pulled the curve out, and it's buckled forward. So even though we have some bulges that have disappeared, and we've got some increase in disc space, we have unfortunately pulled the curve out of the neck. Using the posture pump equipment, we were able to separate the disc thoroughly from back to front. So when an individual is laying on the posture pump equipment, the force of the air going from behind the neck, pulling the joints apart, pries the joint open from the back all the way to the front, not just at the back, like linear traction tends to do. So the biggest finding in, in this part of the study was the fact that linear traction, while it does a great job of pulling bulge, bulging discs back in, as does the posture pump, it does cause the neck in a lot of cases to lose the curve. Because if you think about it, we're really pulling the curve out of the neck when we use linear traction. So posture pump, the new idea, EED technology, will bring a curve back to the neck, will separate the, separate the joint more thoroughly, and at the same time will not cause a buckling effect or the kyphotic forcing of the spine back as in linear traction. So in conclusion, uh, Dr. Sheely found in the 2008 IRB approved study that the cervical curve changes were dramatically different between using EED or the posture pump machine and regular linear traction. He found that in, a, in 26 out of 36 patients who were on the posture pump equipment during the MRI, and this was only for a few minutes, that 72% of them had a curve improvement. He found during linear traction that 83% of the patients lost some or all of their curve. Many of them were buckled back into kyphosis. So that was really the dramatic uh, difference in, in the two pieces of equipment. What he also found was that in the changes in anterior subarachnoid protrusions, that both machines did a pretty darn good job. For example, EED, which is the posture pump equipment, we had almost 86% of the patients had one or more disc bulges drawn back in while they were in the MRI machine under the EED technology that we have via posture pump. And he found about 71% had disc improvement, disc bulge improvement using linear traction. So while both machines did a good job, the posture pump still came out ahead on that, which uh, was very enlightening for Dr. Sheely because his whole career, uh, when he was a neurosurgeon, they did prescribe a lot of linear traction. 
Now that we have posture pump equipment available, he really likes it. The, another thing that he found, which was uh, very interesting during the, uh, the study, was that um, the disc height changes were, were pretty dramatic with the posture pump. And in, over, in the overall increase, posture pump increased the disc height about twice as much as linear traction did, and we saw that in the MRIs graphically a moment ago. The real reason why the linear traction had lower results than the posture pump did in disc height improvement is because, again, when you pull the head away from the body, it tends to roll forward. And when that happens, you pry the back of the joint open, but you collapse the front and the middle of the disc, and that's what his measurements showed. And that's why posture pump had almost double. One more important thing I, I want to mention is that the posterior disc in the spine using the EED technology, and I may have mentioned this earlier, also uh, increased about the same amount as using linear traction. Even though linear traction really is designed to pry up the back of the joints, the posture pump equipment uh, produced about the same uh, distance of separation as linear traction did. Another interesting finding that he concluded after the uh, 2008 study was that during EED, or the use of the posture pump equipment, the anterior disc space on average increased about 17%. Now keep in mind that many of the discs in the spine were not compressed to begin with. So it's only the ones that were really clamped down that you had the huge 40% changes. But the average change was still 17% using EED technology in the anterior portion of the disc. Using linear traction, which we've all used from time to time over the years, he only was able to get about a 3% increase in the anterior disc height. The uh, center disc, center portion of the disc, he was able to achieve about a 10% average disc height improvement in the center of the disc using the posture pump, and uh, with linear traction, only about a 4%. Now here's where linear traction did a good job. It increased the posterior portion of the disc about 19%, and the posture pump was right at 19, 18.93%. So there's not much difference there. The difference really is in the center, center and the anterior portion where posture pump really uh, blew away the results compared to linear traction. So many doctors have, have called in, emailed us and asked us, would it be okay for a patient to use a rolled up towel? Would they get some decompression? Uh, would they get some maybe some disc hydration by rolling a towel up and putting it under their neck? Some patients have special pillows that they like to lay on and, and um, unfortunately the research that we've done and the answer is no, it just doesn't help at all. And I too, during my practice, during the years I used uh, towels and uh, sometimes uh, rolled up foam um, pillows and such and unfortunately it just doesn't give us any, uh, any reshaping, any disc hydration, certainly no uh, disc height improvement. And to show you and to illustrate that, and this is something you can show your patients, because a lot of them may not follow your uh, recommendations thinking that they know just as much as you do, and you know how that can be. But here's a good example of what really takes place in the spine when you use a rolled up towel. Here's an individual with no device applied in the MRI machine, and here's what we found. In this case, this person had no cervical curve. In fact, they had lost some of their curve and they had buckled forward, and you can see the compression at C5 and C6 in the anterior portion. We rolled up a towel, put them in the MRI machine, and this is what we found. Virtually no real improvement. In fact, we've actually got a little bit more of a buckle there because the towel being rolled up tend to, to push the upper neck a little bit higher and let the lower middle neck kind of drop down. But we have no significant improvement in the spine as you can see. Same patient, moments later, on the posture pump machine in the MRI equipment, and here's what we found. We had a 25% increase in disc height, a 40% increase in disc height there, and a 50% increase in disc height there. 50%. Also, we notice, you will notice here that we've got a curve in the spine again. So we're getting disc hydration, joint separation, at the same time we're restoring the curve. So unfortunately, the answer to rolled up towels and pillows stuffed in the neck is you just aren't getting that joint separation. And I'd like to answer one more question while I'm at this. A lot of doctors have called and said, 
Well, can't I do this with my hands? Can't I pull and lift and get disc hydration and get decompression? And unfortunately, we've never been able to prove that. Uh, over the years, we've tried all different types of techniques. But see, the posture pump, when it inflates in that neck, you're getting a, uni a uniform inflation and joint separation, very equal on both sides. And height also is, is involved in that. And it's pressure over time that makes the change. Pressure over time. You can't sit there and hold your hands for 20 minutes like that anyway. So you really need the um, advantages of the posture pump disc hydrate equipment if you're going to make some improvement over time that's going to last. Many doctors have called in and, and uh, wrote us and emailed us that they'd like to know some of the specific differences that the uh, lower spine presents uh, than the neck does and how the lower uh, posture pump machine works compared to the neck. And there are a few differences in the lower spine uh, problems that we address that uh, we don't see as much in the cervical spine. The first thing that we, that we have in the lumbar spine is very similar, as we've shown before, to the, uh, to the neck, and that is that some people do lose the shape of their spine. Usually down below, they still keep their curve pretty good, but here, a lot of times, they will tend to, to lose it. But one of the bigger problems we find in the, in, the, in the lower spine is that the sacrum down here, the lowest part down right, right above the coccyx, that the sacrum will be buckled forward or will have moved anterior to the fifth lumbar. So we've got a few things. Number one, we can lose some of the shape of the lumbar spine, so we do want to inflate and bring that back. Number two, we do have a problem, a common problem where the sacrum does tilt forward in a lot of cases, more so forward than back much more so forward. So that's something we want to address with the posture pump. And then uh, the, the third problem is we want to be able to find out if the person's spine is locked where it's tilting one way but the other way it can't tilt in the lower spine it's locked so only the upper part will move. And that's what we're going to illustrate now using some x-rays. Now this is what happens. Very commonly if a person is leaning to one side Normally, and we're aware of this, the disc tissue will shift to the opposite side. That's normal. And if they lean this way, the disc tissue should shift to the opposite side, and that's normal. What we find happening in a lot of patients over the years, and that's from taking lateral bending x-rays on thousands of patients, we have found that it's very common that we might get good movement to one side in one patient, but we take uh, a, a patient that has a problem there, and the problem is the disc tissue shifts over, and when it shifts over, it stays and it's locked in this position. Then they try to move over to the side and what happens is the spine won't go, so it buckles up above. And, they, and you think when you do your examination that they're able to lean to their side, but they're really not in the lumbar spine. It's up in the upper lumbar or the lower thoracic that we're getting the movement because of this problem down here of the disc being locked. Now let, let's take a real example of this. Here's a bending right here, a normal bending. Okay. And what we see here is the discs opening here, that's okay. Discs is opening here, that's okay. Opening here, we're good, and we're good here. So as they lean to this side, we have the discs fan open. Now here is a patient trying to lean over to the same side, but look what's happened here. Because one disc, this disc here, is locked on this side, they cannot make it. But if you were examining, you might think, oh, they're pretty good. They're making some kind of a lean. But what's really happening is that one disc is blocking, blocking their spine from making that motion. The reason why I mention it is because it's such a damaging problem. When you've got a disc that's locked over to one side, and you've got a patient, you know, maybe sports activity, maybe their daily activity at work, they're leaning over on that, that disc that's shifted. It's like leaning over on a grape. Eventually, that thing's going to explode, and you're going to have a ruptured disc there. And it's something that we can address with the Model 2000 posture pump, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment.